It's time to get active. The breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson. He's back. I'm and back. we have a great show. We're going to pivot a little bit. We've been doing a lot of foreign policy, obviously, because of Ukraine. Um, and that's an ongoing situation. And it's horrifying. And we are still praying for the Ukrainians um, and hope that gets to some resolution sooner than later. Um, but we have a big announcement this week going on here at the Lincoln Project. If you follow us on Twitter and follow us um, on all of our social, you'll see that we have launched something called The Union. And we are so excited to finally unveil it and have it going full speed ahead now. We've been previewing it a little bit, soft launching it for a little while, but now it is up and running, ready to go. And it is a pro-democracy a coalition that the Lincoln Project is incubating, basically a clearinghouse for folks who want to get involved, who want to get to work to help save our democracy from this authoritarian nightmare that is coming at us from the right, that is threatening our democracy. And folks always ask, what can we do? What more can we do? Well, the union was created to help navigate people who are looking to get involved and place them with the organizations that fit their skill sets. Is that a fair way to, to describe yes, it? Right? Sure. I think that's exactly right. What a lot of folks have contacted us in the last two and two years now and said, what should we be doing? How can I contribute to the fight? How can I get in this, you know, other than sharing content or sending a donation, how can I get on the front lines and fight? And, you know, the ordinary way that this happens is, is scattershot. It's individual campaigns or groups try to pull volunteers, and they 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 don't always have that network effect, which is what the the the, the union is going to do. That's right. We, in our soft launch window, signed up nearly fifty thousand volunteers, and it's not just oh, going to go knock doors. When you sign up for the union, and I hope you will, you'll be asked what your skills are, what campaigns and issues you're interested in, and where you want to fight. And, you know, we've been able to recruit, I think it's almost a thousand attorneys so far. And That's we're going to take those folks and help deploy them into key states and with other groups that will allow them to say, OK, on Election Day, we're going to need to have an attorney in seven key counties in Florida or North Carolina. And we're going to have these people are going to be able to, to be deployed and to do the work on the ground. We're talking about. Everything from web designers to comms people, PR people, writers, um, activists, neighborhood uh, organizers, door knockers from every every line of, of skill and, and work. And because we're a part of pulling in, I think it's like 35 other groups have all signed up right now. And growing. And growing by the minute. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I think we were signing up like 1,500 people an hour yesterday. Yeah, it was like four people a minute at one point. Right, it was crazy yeah. how yeah. fast it was going. Um, we're pulling in all these other groups. Where it's a big coalition. This doesn't belong to the Lincoln Project. It belongs to a large coalition of groups. We're just incubating it and providing yep. the infrastructure for it. Um, and it's going to allow people across this country, no matter where you are, to find something that will match your skills and match your abilities and match your interests in a really unique way. We think yeah. this is, we think this is a very new way of looking at this. Um, and the, and the, the tech side of it has been an amazing accomplishment in a very short period of time by the folks that came together. Most of them are volunteers and I can't possibly begin naming them all, but it has been run by and managed by volunteers and the tech side has been done by volunteers and we are so grateful for everybody's work and we are we're incredibly enthusiastic because this is something that the republicans are paying for yes they're buying all this infrastructure on the other side if we can build a grassroots army of a million people on the union the network effect of spreading that out and targeting the work to the skills to the campaigns and the causes that we need I think is going to be tremendously important. I've got to give big props for for Joe Trippy and his team, uh, for Angus and, and his team. The guys that have put this together, the men and women who've put this together, absolutely are building something tremendous for, for democracy. And that um, 
in that vein, we have one of the uh, groups, Field Team 6, we have the uh, head of that organization, Jason Berlin, joining us in a few minutes yes. to talk about what they do. Um, we're, we've been featuring various organizations on across our LPTV platforms this week, introducing them to our audience and to our Lincoln Project supporters to give you guys a sense of the types of organizations that uh, are part of this coalition and um, hope that inspires you to, to get involved. So stay tuned for Jason in a couple minutes. But of course, as you know, um, it's Tuesday. So that means, <laughs> and thus, we have a last week in the Republican Party. Thank you for letting me and my wife be able to send our kids to kindergarten without them being sexualized. We have the makings of yet another false flag operation. This time in the far-flung land of Ukraine. Madison Cawthorn called the Lindsay thug. Madison is wrong. You support his real life? Yes. Remember that Zelensky... So our hearts go out to you, the pride of the Tsar, the pride of Moscow. We continue to root for them. It would be a lot more convincing if Zelensky didn't have George Soros' hand up his back moving his mouth. The president has had a, uh, a Bambi's baby brother moment. And my father was... What did my father say? That my father... My father sent a lot of javelin missiles. Listen, my father... My father had... My father was... My father... She's not, my father's always had great intuition. Under my father. My father... I have never seen the CDC coming out saying, oh, you've got to get your second polio shot. you got to get your third. you got to get your fourth. At one time, science said man came from apes. If that is true, why are there still apes? Think about it. You know, now you're getting too smart. We have a president who is, as I said in the angle, essentially a hologram. Trump will take one day off to go golfing, you know, every couple weeks, whatever. And Biden every weekend, he's got three day weekends. Must be nice. Our friends and enemies alike see this once great nation led by a weak, dementia ridden fossil. Two tours in Iraq. Don't tell me I haven't worked. Back off, buddy. You're gonna you back off. off. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Never. That'll happen. Sit down. And there was Eric Trump. Yeah. Er yeah. Eric, I have news for you. Daddy will never love you. Either one of them. Daddy will never love you, Eric. You're the slow one. Yeah. And you know, but he's got the prettier wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but. I almost made a stripper joke and I'm just not going to make a stripper no, joke. No, no. We're not going to do stripper jokes today. Then, yes. Sensitive to strippers. <laughs> not today. <laughs> um, we don't need to get in trouble today with strippers. Uh, but the funny thing about Eric Trump is with the, my father, my father, my father. And it's, it's like Donald, Don Jr. goes out of his way to call him like, you know, the president, Donald Trump. Right. Like, it's so creepy. That's such a dysfunctional. Love me, daddy. Yeah, it's sad, <laughs> but, um, fuck them. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, the other, speaking of crazies. What the hell with the with the Senate, the Ohio Senate primary debate there with Josh Mandel and Gibbons about to throw blows? You know what, Rick? The scary part about that is well, it will help Josh Mandel. Of course it will. Look, there was a the, you know Peter Thiel wanted to have his his JD Vance bot uh, as the nominee in Ohio. It doesn't look like it's going to happen for JD now. And you he's see Don not, Jr. Strilling, chilling for him now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a little alt-right cadre that are still thinks Vance is going to pull it out. But Mandel is definitely the guy to beat right now. Now, now Mitch McConnell's candidate, Jane Timken, um, is is trying to make a play now. But at this point, it's it's Mandel's race to lose in a lot of ways. Well, um, good. I hope they're not spending a lot of money. But, you know, it, at the end of the day, Mandel speaks very fluent MAGA. Yes, yes. And, and very fluent crazy. I'm yes. waiting for the weird video of Josh Mandel in a barn somewhere in the dark <laughs> with traffic going by, <laughs> screaming into the camera about survival food. <laughs> <laughs> Patriot. Uh, what, what is it? Patriot, Patriot supplies? Patriot supplies. Patriot supplies. You can eat these. Oh. 1979 MRE. Oh, my God. And, and you get a free booklet on how to dig a bunker in your backyard. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll send you a free shovel if you order two for your family. <laughs> you received your iodine in case of nuclear attack. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. And we'll even send you gold because you'll need currency. Yeah, gold and canned goods are the advertising basis of their... Uh... It's anyway. true. Anyway, the reason why I said that, Josh Mandel, I hope he gets the nomination because then it just helps the Democrats because you have Tim Ryan or someone sane on the other side in Ohio as their, well, that's, that as their candidate. It's a much be uh, more well, competitive true. race. Ohio is a center-right state, but it's not insane. It's not right. Florida. It's not Florida. Right? <laughs> Yeah, um, it, Florida is one long. I mean, look, Florida is the is the is the the, the Normandy Beach of the culture wars now. It's oh a my constant, you know, wave of of culture war crap. And in Ohio, there is still a large degree of of, of economic motivators for voting patterns. Right, and, and I think Tim Ryan um, can be a very appealing candidate in that space. Um, especially against somebody who was going to go out there and say, the most important issue in Ohio is CRT, where 99% of Ohio voters are like, the fuck? Yeah, what is most that? In Ohio is jobs. Yeah, that's right. So that's I think, right. I think there's some some a good opportunity space for Ryan in that in that campaign uh, if it comes together. We shall see. Um, something else that's coming together, it's in the news I just wanted to mention really quickly because I'd be remiss if we didn't. It's happening. It's historic. Is the uh, Supreme Court nomination hearings going on with uh, Kajani Brown Jackson. And uh, I, I, I was covering some of it today for ABC News. And did you see Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham put on another one of his obnoxious hissy fit performances uh, like he did during the Kavanaugh hearing um, where, you know, he, he like, it was like a barrage of 60 questions at her and he interrupted her totally performative. And it was just so typical Lady Lindsay and obnoxious. And I think it really made him look smaller than he already is. And he's already a diminutive little man. And it just made him look small because she handled it with grace. She handled it with, she was unflappable and it's clear that however you feel about her judicial philosophy, um, she's more than qualified. Uh, she'll be the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court, which is long overdue. She's a Harvard educated um, public defender. She has right. that experience. She's supported by the Fraternal Order of Police and from the Fraternal Order of Police to the Cato Institute to the, the, the you know, the progressives. So that tells you that she's a fair judge. And they're yeah. trying to use this issue with her about uh, being lenient on child pornography sentences and things like that. It's a, a, a QAnon talking point and a you know, week on crime nonsense that these Republicans are trying to push that is really, really disrespectful. And it's and some of these attacks on her, Rick, are racist. They're just flat out racist. Let's not, let's not pretend they're anything but. Yes. And, and, and again, and I don't say that lightly. I don't um, throw the race card around lightly. No, I, I, no, I got you. From from everything that I've read about her, I may disagree with her judicial philosophy on a number of fronts. Me too. But, but she is clearly qualified. She is clearly competent. She is clearly smarter than the guys that are doing this. And I want to tell you folks why they're doing what they're doing. Why are Ted Cruz and, and, and Lady G and the rest of these people... <laughs> putting on their little performative show. Josh Hawley. Josh Hawley, yeah. Commandante Hawley. They're doing it because they want to be on Tucker tonight. They're doing it because they want to be on, on, on Laura Ingram tonight. They do it because they want to be able to go out and say, through their email fundraising list, did you see what I did today? I put you-know-who, because she's a you-know-what in her place. That's right. I mean, look, and, and Ted Cruz did everything but use the word uppity. Yes. I mean, he he really I thought of the of all of them brought it a lot closer to the line in terms of making this explicitly he wanted to make this a vote about about her race not about her competence her philosophy or her record. And and he he, he came so close to it today he that did. I was quite it was quite remarkable. And you know he's not he's not in a vacuum either. The RNC on their official Twitter account put up a photo of her with the her initials, and then it said equals CRT. That is low rent race baiting right there. Like, you, really? Just because she's a woman of color, um, you, you guys are gonna try to label this on her and and use that grievance? It is. It was just. It was despicable. But yeah. not surprising. It's not who they are now. That's Listen, right. It's who they are now. See, but never forget, folks. The RNC spends a meaningful fraction of its monthly budget that Republican donors send 
to Donald Trump's legal bills. Correct. Which is unprecedented, by the way. Which is it doesn't happen. No. And it is it is a it is a failed organization at many levels, but it does not fail to shut to shunt money into the Trump pockets. And the rooms continue to send it, which is just anyway. So I just wanted to get that in because that's big news today. And um, it's it's very interesting. And for people to pay attention, it's all performative, all of it from these Republicans acting like jackasses, it being so disrespectful of her. And, um, you know, we're going to call them out on it. But guess what? No matter what they do, unless she completely blows it, which I don't suspect she's been through these confirmation hearings before uh, for other positions. Um, she's going to get confirmed because it only takes 50 plus one. So, yeah. And look, I don't, I don't think you can, I, I think I, the, a lot of this showboating today, um, this does not feel like the kind of hearing. And, and I've seen these done a number of times now from the Republican side, it doesn't feel like the kind of hearing where they're willing to burn down the entire country to do it. Right. They don't seem to have the level of, of cohesiveness and organization to do it. Right. It will not be easy, but I don't think Mitch McConnell wants to to, to spend the next you know number of weeks uh, beating up a black woman in front of national ca- cameras. The first black woman to sit on the Supreme Correct. Court. I, yes, I don't I don't think that that uh, that plays well for them going into the midterms. But it shows you that elections matter, folks. Imagine if Donald Trump was president of the United States. This would be his pick, and it wouldn't be her. It would not be someone as qualified as. Kadani Brown Jackson, I can tell you that. That is correct. Oh my goodness. Well, that just reminds us why, as I say, elections matter, why the union is important, why it exists. And let's bring in our guest for tonight, Jason Berlin, to talk about his efforts, his organization, field team six founder, Jason Berlin, and member of the union. Welcome to the breakdown. Thank you so much. Thanks Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for what you do. No, thank you, because we do what we do at our level and you do what you do on the grassroots level where we all play a role. And I think it's so critically important to have organizations like yours um, spotlighted because it shows that everyday folks can get involved. A lot of times people feel like, what are we, you know, what, what can I do? I'm just one person. Well, you'd be surprised. So tell us about your organization, Field Team Six. Uh, happy to. So Field Team 6, our stated mission is register Democrats, save the world. And hey, from small to large, man, I love it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's what we have uh, been working on since we were founded in 2019. Um, I was a TV writer myself for 18 years and in reality and comedy. And then Trump got elected and it broke my heart and brain and I needed to stop writing for reality and just get into the fight all day, every day. So volunteered with Swing Left and then California Democratic Party interviewed hard for a job as an organizer because most organizers are half my age. (laughs) They heard, I wasn't letting them say no, gave me the job. And uh, with the volunteer army that we rallied, um, made up of 80% women, by the way, which the resistance nationwide is, that's that's, that's a ratio that holds. we love that. Uh, yeah, it's women <laughs> who have been saving the world primarily, and that story's not getting told enough. Listen, I say it all the time that women run the world. We just let men think they do. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, so we were able to register over six thousand Democrats and help flip five House seats in Southern California. And of course, that's when my job with the party ended, right after that election, which is normal and also insane. So that's insane. <laughs> insane. It's the best deal. Uh, they they could possibly get. So that's when I founded Field Team 6 so that we could continue registering Democrats all year, every year. I've never had a job where I could afford to take a year off, you know? So no more one night stands with a voter a month before the election. This is all year, <laughs> every year. And we went national to see what kind of good trouble we could get into on a national battleground for 2020. So, well, I think it's, I, I, I I always say this. It's not a secret. It's not something derived from my 30 years in politics. But building a farm team who uh, of folks in states and counties and, and individual districts who do voter registration, who do the grassroots work, building that farm team is the most important thing any political party can do. And you can either build it or buy it. And building it makes a lot more sense because people are more committed. And so that seems like the work you guys are doing do you have any target states you're really focused on this year? 
Yes, nine states. And I love what you're saying about like building versus buying. Volunteers are always better than paid oh. people because they care. That's and right. They, they study the issues and they know the candidates. So, so yeah, for, so for 2020, we were able to help register 785,000 Democrats across swing states, um, uh, Democratic voters, 498,000 of whom voted, which came out to six times Biden's margin in Arizona, five times in Georgia, 98% of the margin, sorry, mix it up, 89%, sorry, of the margin in Wisconsin, the three states that took the Electoral College. And yes, for this cycle, um, our goals are to save the Senate majority, save the House majority, save the democracy itself. And we're focusing on nine states. They are Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wisconsin. And those are primarily triple word score states where yep. we get the most bang for our Democrat, you know? Right. So in sure. and states. in California, you've got basically four of those super competitive house seats in one media market. Right. That's right. Yeah, there's plenty of house seats in California to to contest. That's why California is one of those states. But most of them have a um, you know a, a, a super important Senate race, at least one House race, and something down ballot as well. Like Pennsylvania, for example. You know, sure. we got to replace Pat Toomey in the Senate. Um, there's a number of House seats contested and uh, have to replace termed out Governor Wolf with another Democrat. Mm -hmm. so I yeah. Rick, could, did you ever imagine that we'd be sitting here and, and praising and enamored and and working with someone that's only goal is to register Democrats? You know what? At this point, Tara, <laughs> it's like uh, I everybody else stopped caring about ideology a long time ago. I and know. Now a challenge you're going to you're either going to have a democracy and a free republic, or you're not. That's right. It's surreal. The so, fight. The fight is not about the, I, that. I, that's right. I don't, I don't really care about it, unless you're into like cannibalism or something. Right. I'm not, <laughs> not going to worry about it. And, and we just got to move. We've got to move out. And, and, and look, because it's not about that anymore. It is yeah. about democracy, this and country, we all agree yeah, we, on that. This country, right. we will not have more elections in four or six years if we don't recapture the momentum of a vibrant, organized, operational Democratic Party in this country. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And it, it, you can't fake it. You got to do it. And so, Jason, that's the, the kind of work you guys are doing is really something I just, I'm so glad you guys were, came into the union. I hope we can push a lot of great volunteers uh, and, and activists your way, because I really think this is, you know, in, 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 especially in these voter registration groups, the, the, the payoff, the, the return on investment is just absolutely enormous. It is. And what makes us unique is we do this proudly partisan voter registration. So, you know, in the last four years, well, you know, to, to 2020, we'd say, excuse me, miss, can you help me save the world from Trump? And still, we can't say that anymore. Thank God. But we can say things like, oh, hey, oh, stay, stay tuned. Kind of, kind of can, kind of can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so, Trumpism, it's like, can't help us save the world from Trumpism. Right. That's true. Uh -huh. that, so, that is the authoritarian. That. The, the authoritarianism is is something that I, I think is a motivator that that people have underestimated, and especially now that you see this I, this example of where it always ends up in Ukraine every day on your television. I think it's mm -hmm. a powerful right. uh, a powerful motivator. So Jason, yeah. tell me a little bit about um, some of the stuff that you guys do, because you're I encourage folks to go to your website um, and, you know, check you out and see if that's an organization that you they want to join through the union. Um, and you you talk about uh, you could you have the voting re voter registration in a box. What is that? Yeah, thank you for for knowing that um, we do voter registration in person and digitally, digitally through text banks, phone banks, postcarding social media storms. Uh, but in person, we have something called voter drive in a box. Um, most people forget one of the words and call it voter in a box. That's cruel. We don't do that. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> voter drive, leave holes at least. But right. so voter drive in a box is, is the culmination of our the last five years of voter registration learnings. And uh, we put everything you need to run your own voter drive all on one page. So our whole goal with organizing is to, to, to make voter registration easy, fun, and effective. And if you're doing it right, it should be more than fun. It should be super inspiring.
I mean, it was life changing to me. Tell so, us about the app that you guys use, because I saw that you you have this app, which seemed to be quite unique. I hadn't seen that before in some of the other grassroots organizations. Yeah, it's called Voterizer.org, and it is our own custom built voter registration website. We built it um, just out of a need to have a, a super fast way to, to register Democrats, you know, and um, there was nothing like it online. What uh, so Voterizer? It starts. It's only two pages total. It's the <laughs> only voter registration site that does not require any information from the voter before it gets them exactly where they need to be on the secretary exact page of the Secretary of State site where they can register online in states that allow that. That's streamlining it. It's streamlining because you don't, it's because the motivation isn't to necessarily get them for, you know, the voter voter rolls for your candidates so that they can send the money or whatever. It's just like, we just want to send you, send you to the proper location. So you know what's happening in your state, when your local elections are happening, how you can register to vote and things like that. So it's just a resource for people, an easy resource. Exactly. And it's, it's customizable. It's embeddable. It's available in Espanol. You know, if people want, if it's important, right? If, if people want to require some information from voters for their organization, we can provide them with their own version that does that. But for us, we don't mind the information cost to us because it's more important to get people registered. The whole problem with online voter registration is it's called the leaky funnel. And it's that people get bored and right. stop doing it before they're done. So right. we right. eliminate the leaky funnel by eliminating the funnel. Just get them right there. Get them registered. No, that's, that's exactly right. You've got to keep the steps, the, the step count below seven steps or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> to get people to actually close and 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 finish on those things. God, Definitely. we're such a lazy society in so many ways. Our attention spans are ridiculous, but you know, you learn how to adapt, right? It creates necessity uh, is the mother of invention, right? So it's uh, it it just it it's it's great to see the marriage of technology and and voter registration in something as simple as well. It's here as an app. There's no excuse. So people, there is no excuse anymore not to be registered or help others get Let's registered. Do it, y'all. That's right. Well, I wanted to show a video before we let you go, Jason. Um, this is a taste, a little bit of of what they do over there at Field Team Six. Let's let's roll it. Hey, I'm Jason Berlin with Field Team Six, and this is your voice. Here's you complaining about politics on social media. Here's you trading angry texts with racist Uncle Wally. And here's you registering to vote. Make your voice count. Don't be a cornhole. Register to vote. Next step, help us register new Democrats by going to fieldteam6.org and clicking on donate. Thank you. <laughs> Molly, I love you. Don't be a cornhole. <laughs> yep. I had to gain 15 pounds for that role. Oh my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> well, that's Thank my you. excuse. <laughs> right. Uh, Jason, we appreciate you. Keep up the great work. Uh, welcome to the union. We're thrilled to have you a part a part of it. And uh, folks, don't be a cornhole. Go check out the union. Yeah. Check out Field Team 6. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah, he's a great guy. And, um, you know, well, you see where it, hey, his heart is in it. And that really shines through. And I think that's, that's part of the success of, of their organization and why people are drawn to it. Because you want to be a part. I mean, it's so dark all the time that you want to feel some type of hope and have some fun. You got to have some freaking levity. You see what we do here all the time. It, you know, I had to stop Rick from stripper jokes today. But usually we just let it be. <laughs> We let it fly. You no, know? I, I'll save them. They're they're evergreen. Trust me. <laughs> oh Lord, help us. Well, we want to leave you guys with our video, our promo for the union to keep the inspiration going. We'll leave you with that, and make sure you tune into our sister program tomorrow. We're speaking. There'll be more union stuff to talk about with them, with Lisa and Maya, and we will see you guys on Thursday. Here's our union promo. Have a great night. For 240 years, our union endured. But it's under challenge like never before. 
We're engaged anew in a struggle between democracy and autocracy. Can we save democracy? Overcome authoritarian movements at home and abroad? Come together to ensure the government of the people, by the people, for the people endures? We say we can. Democracy will and must prevail. Play your part by joining the union. The union gives Americans the tools to mobilize friends and neighbors, to amplify our voices, organize for democracy, and defeat Trumpists and authoritarians from the White House to the city council. It matches the skills of volunteers and activists with campaigns and causes, work that must be done to protect democracy. Lincoln believed it was the sacred duty of every president to preserve the Union at all costs. We believe it's the sacred duty of every American. Now it's up to all of us, to we the people. Because together, we will win. America will endure. The Union. All in.